things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But but right now, as far as I've understood, we, we're in one of these uh, situations where they don't understand why the sun is so uh, quiet, as it were. It, it should be more active at this point, I've heard, <laughs> but it's actually that's not. Right. Can you talk that's about that? That's right. Yes. Um, the solar cycle, as it's called, the sunspot cycle, is one of the big mysteries of the sun. It's not explained by thermonuclear theory. You would not expect a solar cycle or sunspots or even the granulated appearance of the uh, photosphere of the sun uh, based on a thermonuclear model. The, what is actually going on is that uh, the thing we call the sun is actually the bright photosphere itself, which in the electrical model is some distance, uh, it's at the top of the atmosphere, if you like, of a body which is inside and is of heavier elements, uh, just like um, the other planets in the solar system. So the sun has no thermonuclear engine at the centre. When you look at a sunspot, you see a clearing in this discharge and beneath is cooler, it's dark. Now, if energy was trying to escape from the sun, it should be much brighter if you were to part the, uh, the obscuring layer at the top. And that's not what we find. So uh, a very complicated theory had to be put forward about uh, magnetic refrigeration and this kind of thing to try and <laughs> make the sunspot cool when it should have been uh, much hotter. So it's just simple things like this that point to the direction or the mistakes that were made in those early days. Uh, the other idea was that uh, the sun had to have a central engine to blow it up to the size we see. But that makes an assumption that it's just a, a, a neutral ball of gas responding to the force of gravity. But if it's an electrical object, if it's a, an anode in a um, an arc discharge or in a glow discharge, then uh, what we're looking at is not the surface of an object at all. It's it's a glowing plasma phenomenon, like the neon glow in a neon sign, uh, which can be at some distance from the electrode. Hmm. Uh, and now, of course, we see stars which are bigger than uh, the orbit of Jupiter or Saturn. Uh, and the question is, well, how does it uh, blow itself up to that size? Well, it, it doesn't. That glow is an electrical phenomenon. It has nothing to do with the central body itself. So, so I guess also as well that that would explain then why the surface temperature is higher than, than in the core. Is, isn't that what they've measured or, or come uh, the conclusions no. that they made? No, you have this uh, crazy situation where you have a core which is at uh, millions of degrees, uh, thought to be at millions of degrees in order to uh, sustain some kind of thermonuclear activity. Then you have this, the uh, photosphere of the sun, which is about 5,700 degrees, and then you go up into the corona, where it's millions of degrees. So here you have the coolest spot is in between two hot spots. Ah, that's right. <laughs> and you, it, it just cannot work. Uh, eventually that cool spot must heat up to the same temperature as either the center of the sun or the, the uh, corona. Hmm. So they've had to cook up all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful mechanisms by which somehow energy can get from the center of the sun, out of the sun, without heating the uh, surface or the photosphere, and yet heat up the corona. <laughs> and to do this, they invoke, uh, the uh, physicists invoke magnetism. Now, I, I had a very telling commentary made by the chief scientist of Australia at a meeting uh, of the at the university here, where she said, when we don't understand something, we blame it on magnetism. <laughs> and, now, it's funny that scientists often have these throwaway lines at their meetings, that's why I attend so many of them, which you would never see <laughs> published in any of their journals. <laughs> but that is precisely what happens. Uh, somehow or another, magnetism is generated, and they've never been able to show precisely how that happens. Uh, and yet the sun itself is just one ball of uh, complex magnetic behaviour. Uh, which is easily explained in the electrical model uh, if it's uh, an anode in a, di a glow discharge, but has no no business being there at all in the thermonuclear model of the star. Uh, we're talking about the uh, cyclic nature of um, the um, solar magnetic field and its sunspots, and all of this too is explained simply by a varying current input to the sun. So right now we're in a position where the current is not changing. It's uh, it's steady. 
but most of the time it is either uh, changing uh, in one direction or another. Mm. And uh, that gives us the uh, solar cycle, the change in magnetism on the sun and the movement of sunspots in latitude. Hans Alfain himself drew the circuit for the sun um, many decades ago, but nobody's paid any attention. Um, Alfain himself uh, didn't see the connection with the galaxy, uh, but that's also been shown now in the discovery of these um, uh, neutral atoms from outside the solar system. Uh, which all seem to come from uh, this uh, encircling, um, uh, I suppose you call it a cylinder, around the sun. Mm -hmm. And the magnetic field outside the uh, sun's environment, the heliosphere, that's the big um, plasma sheath that surrounds the sun, well out beyond Pluto. The uh, galactic environment also has the steady magnetic field, which was not expected in the standard model, but which was essential to the electric model. Hmm. So we keep getting verification almost on a, a daily basis from discoveries uh, from the uh, space uh, spacecraft and also the new telescopes on Earth. Oh, that's that's incredible. And so what, uh, in terms of if we want to look at it from the point of view of predicting then or, or, or trying to understand better uh, so the solar cycles in order to, well, at this time, actually both prepare here on Earth because, again, these major... Uh, flares when they do happen can indeed upset uh, our electrical sy systems here on here on Earth. Uh, mm -hmm. Waves like uh, pulsating e EMA wa EMF waves going out and all all of that too. So, w does it make it easier to predict then uh, when the um, the peaks or dips and valleys of sun activity is supposed to happen if we look at it from the electrical universe point of view, or is it still a, a mystery what drives it and and how? Uh, and, and why it's more active at certain points, Well, Well, we know how current is transferred uh, through space. Uh, it takes the form of uh, filaments, and uh, in a fa actual fact, it follows the same engineering principle that we use with uh, twisted pairs of wires, which radiate uh, the least energy. That's why engineers use them for um, uh, signal transfer and that kind of thing. And it turns out that nature does the same in the universe. So everywhere you look in space, uh, at nebulae, anything that's glowing, you'll see this filamentary structure, which is quite striking. And it's not explained by exploding stars or um, shock waves and that kind of thing. Now, most of them are invisible because uh, the, the um, power density and the matter density is uh, so low that... Uh, you can only pick up the signals with radio telescopes. It seems rather ironic that uh, when the radio telescopes were first proposed, astronomers said, no, you don't need those. What would you need those for? Well, it turns out that uh, they will be an essential part of the uh, re revelation of the electrical nature of the universe because they can actually trace these uh, intergalactic, these dark currents, as they're called. Now... The sun itself uh, is powered by these dark currents. So the means of finding out exactly what's going on in our uh, immediate solar system environment is what we need if we're going to uh, predict what the sun might do. And that will be, uh, I think, uh, done by people like the radio astronomers and perhaps these people who uh, now have uh, tele... Um, spacecraft which can detect these neutral atoms coming in from beyond the solar system. We need to know what's going on in the sun's environment because it's the environment that controls the sun. It's not something from inside the sun. Mm. Hmm. You know, when you mentioned that the, 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 in most cases, uh, these, uh, the, the filaments or, or these twi twisted pairs in that sense that you're talking about, that they're invisible. Uh, yes. I don't know if you recall, I think it was back in 2006 when they, uh, discovered this kind of what they call a DNA or double, double helix basically right. spotted out in, into space. Does that uh, come into the picture here as well? Yes. In, on occasions, if the matter density is enough or the electric current density is enough, uh, the um, filament will glow. And when it does, you will see these uh, long filaments. And in some cases where the uh, seeing is very good, you can actually see the twisted pairs themselves. And uh, this is this is what gave rise to the idea of the kind of DNA in, in space, 
And it is a fascinating thing.